Hello and welcome back to the eighth in our series introducing Vertex for reactive programming. And if you've looked at all at the Vertex documentation, you'll probably have seen this section on the front page explaining that Vertex is polyglot. Polyglot meaning multiple languages. <clears throat> and so you can see that you can write Vertex applications using Java, using Kotlin, using JavaScript, Groovy, Ruby, Scala, and there's community support for a few other languages as well. Now this is pretty cool in that you can leverage the skills that your teams already have. But sometimes it's actually useful to go to the next level and what isn't explicitly called out in the documentation as far as I'm aware is that you can actually mix and match multiple languages in a single application. So far in our example application, we've deployed two verticals, the hello vertical and the main vertical, and they've both been written in Java. In this little segment, I'm going to show you that we can take and comment out this hello vertical, and we're going to deploy a new vertical because I'm lazy and I like writing clear, clean, concise code. So sometimes groovy is a better answer for that. So I'm going to say vertex deploy vertical and I'm going to say deploy hello groovy. And I don't need a completion handler for now. I'll show you why we have the option for those completion handlers at a later date <clears throat> when we're showing how to do asynchronous coordination. So now I'm going to try to deploy a hello groovy file and I can just put the source file for this in my resources directory. Hello groovy. With dynamic languages like groovy or JavaScript or Ruby, the nice thing is, is we don't actually have to write a complete vertical class. When you instantiate one of these dynamic language verticals, it's as if you're automatically placed inside that start method like we see inside of our Java verticals. So you can code as if you're right here inside this start method. And I'll show you what that looks like. We'd say vertex dot event bus consumer and I'm gonna copy the address Specifically, I'm going to copy this address. And instead of using a Java Lambda, we can use a Groovy Closure as our handler. So we'll get message, boom. And if you recall from our Hello Vertical earlier, when we get a name, we had to store it as a variable cast it out of the body which returns java lang object and then use string format and things like that groovy gives us some nice little syntactic sugar to make this a little easier so we can just say vertex or actually message.reply and we can use a groovy g string which has support for string interpolation and just say hello message dot body exclamation point much simpler much easier to read and at this point the only thing left to do really is add support for this language so I'm just gonna add vertex lang groovy And here in a minute, we're going to use this. We're going to use Vertex Lang JavaScript as well. Whoa, three languages in a single application. It's kind of interesting. I don't recommend doing this on a regular basis, but it can be useful. So in this case, we're also going to deploy hello.js. We're going to create that new file. And in hello.js, we could actually pretty much just copy this exact code from our Java vertical and the only part we have to change is the syntax for the the closure or the lambda so in JavaScript a closure or a lambda looks like this huh 
small change, same API, whether we're using JavaScript, Groovy, or Java. This means that you can consistently and easily program regardless of which language you try to implement your verticals using. So let's see what this actually looks like when we run it. We can say maven clean compile vertex run. The one downside of using dynamic languages that are not pre-compiled is that you have to give the vertex application a few more seconds to become ready. Because what can happen is that you might not get a response initially. Oh, one other thing. Because I had added this authentication token last time, I would have to authenticate. I'm actually going to pull that out for now to simplify things. And you'll notice that the first couple of seconds we're getting this internal server error, but then everything starts working. That's because Vertex is taking the time to interpret and just in time compile the JavaScript and the Groovy code. Because we're actually just passing the raw code, not a compiled class. And we still get the benefit of our uh, hot reload. It just takes a few seconds longer. So we're going to change this to hello vertex world from JavaScript. And we'll save that. And we'll say hello name from Groovy. Give that a few seconds. You'll notice that it's automatically restarting in the background. We get those internal server errors for a few moments. And then we start getting our responses. That's actually what I consider sort of a Vertex superpower. Program in the language that allows you to solve your programming problem idiomatically, readably, very cleanly and just package it all together in the application that you want. In the next segment, we'll talk a little bit more about how Vertex applications start up and some options that we can pass when we start that application. Thanks for joining me. I hope you continue watching.